Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and this is concentrates from a sample that Dan Hurd just came down and ran through our jaw crusher, hammer mill, and shaker table. And we're going to smelt these down and figure out how much gold Dan had in his sample. This is a collaboration or a continuation video from Dan's, so I'll leave Dan's video on an end screen on this video so you can check his out after you watch this one. But let's get started and get this stuff smelted down. We're going to jump right into it. Here's a close up look at Dan's concentrates and there's a little bit of quartz in there but there's quite a bit of sulfides because this is what we panned out of the number one and number two concentrates we have about 500 grams this jug weighs about 40 grams or so now we'll mix up a flux recipe the goal is to eat up all the junk in here leave just the precious metals and i'm going to add a collector metal to help collect all the little bit of gold down at the bottom and we'll work on getting the gold out of the collector metal Here's our soda ash. I'm going to add about 500 grams of soda ash. And this is going to help dissolve any of those sulfides in there. And I'm going to add some iron a little bit later to help break down those sulfides into a form that we can absorb with our flux. Now we'll do about 250 grams of anhydrous borax. This is going to help absorb any oxides. And then I'll add about 200 grams of silica because I figure we have at least 50 grams in our material. So we'll end up with about 250 grams worth of silica. Now we put in our material, our concentrates. Put a lid on there and shake it up, mix it all up. Now it's ready to put in the furnace. I've got it transferred into a number 10 silica carbide crucible. I really like these crucibles if you're going to do bigger production smelts. The fire clay just doesn't last. These last a long, long time. I've added to this some iron nails. That's going to help reduce the sulfides to base metals. And any iron in there is going to soak up all the sulfur that's left over. And we're going to create an iron-rich mat that is really bad at absorbing any of the precious metals. And then I've also added uh, collector metal in there. I used about 35 grams of bismuth, uh, 32 actually, I think. And so that's going to filter down through the smelt as it uh, melts down, collect all the little pieces of gold and silver, and it'll collect them down at the bottom of this crucible that will collect down at the bottom of our cone mold when we pour it. Here's our furnace. Simple design. This is KO wool. I have a propane tank over there, a little shot back as a blower propane and air come down mix here in this little header and into the furnace and if you guys are interested in any of this stuff crucibles ko wool anything i've got links in the description below so check those out if you want to get into smelting I've got it cooling off in a bucket of water. The bismuth collector, if there's any lead in there, yeah, see we're at 200 and 250 degrees Fahrenheit. If there's any lead in there that mixes with the bismuth, it reduces the melting point of both metals, the alloy that it makes, way, way down. And so I, I gotta make real sure that we're, we're cool enough to tip it over. The other thing is the bottom of that cone has a huge amount of surface area compared to the very center of the big mass. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we're cool enough that I can tip it over and I won't have liquid metal running all over the place. Okay, cross our fingers. 
Ah, good. Nice glassy slag. We'll see if we got our metal cone right there. Yeah, I can see it right there. We're hoping for no matte layer in there. And matte is a sulfide layer when all the sulfides melt together. But I don't see one. Nice. Nice clean button. Slag all the way down. So that is that is a perfect smelt. That's exactly what you want to see. No mat, button separates easily from the slag. Good one. All cleaned up, it weighs 31 grams. So we didn't lose hardly any collector metal to the reactions going on in the crucible. So that works out good. Now we'll take that and get it in a cupel. This is a cupel or cupel or however you pronounce it. And we're gonna put our bismuth bead in there, put it in the furnace, an electric furnace and get it up to about 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. That will melt the bismuth and it will melt the bismuth oxide that forms on the surface of our little molten puddle. And the bismuth oxide, the molten bismuth oxide is gonna roll over and when it touches this cupel, it absorbs into this like a sponge. The precious metals don't absorb into the cupel. And so as that reaction continues, the oxides continuously roll off and are absorbed into our metal oxide sponge, our cupel, and the bead gets smaller and smaller and smaller until there's no more base metals left and you're only left with the precious metals. Now I get a lot of questions about these things. Can you reuse them? If th this cupel can hold about 60 grams of base metals, I'm gonna use about 30 in this one, 32, whatever it is. So I wouldn't reuse this one. This I just, you know, toss this one. The other question I get a lot is, can you recover the bismuth from the cupels? Yes, you can. I've done this in another video, uh, but it's just, the bismuth isn't worth enough to go and recover the cupel. You'd have to crush this up. You'd have to get the grain size fairly small, mix it with flux and carbon to reduce the oxides back to bismuth metal, and you'd have to re-smelt them down in the furnace. So. Uh, you can reuse them if they're not fully saturated, but I don't very often because they're so cheap. And yes, you can get the bismuth back out, but it's not worth doing because it's so expensive and time consuming. Got our cupel warmed up. Here goes our button. When we open it up again, we'll have a bead of precious metal left. Let's check on our bead here. Oh, that's a nice little bead. Yeah. That's pretty good size. Let's see if I can do this while it's still hot here. Oh yeah. Nice little gold bead. Get this thing weighed here. Weighs, oh, about a quarter of a gram. That's pretty good. I think Dan said it was about 30 pounds, he thought, of ore. So now let's do some math, figure out how much gold he has per ton. Here's our bead, weighs point 246 grams and 30 pounds is 0 0.015 tons. So when you divide those two, you get 16.4 grams per ton. But based on the color of that bead, it's not real, real yellow. We'll estimate just for fun that it's about 75% gold. So 16.4 grams times 75% gold is 12.3 grams per ton. So not too bad, Dan, good work. All right, everyone. Well, that's the results of our test. I wanted to give a big thanks to Dan Hurd for coming down and running his sample and letting me smelt down his concentrates. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to find more videos like this, check out our channel. And also be sure to check out Dan's video, which is the start where I got the ore and, and you can see how it was processed. So thanks again, everybody, for watching. We'll see you on the next video.